Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 52 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, today, I want to do more with biomes and dimensions and travel and all kinds of cool stuff. However, I decided that before I jump into dimensional travel, I would like to potentially uh, expand what I've got going on over here and uh, add another option for power gen. So right now we're generating power pretty exclusively with oil. We set up redstone things, but we turned them off for the time being. We also set up a culinary generator. I might have turned that off as well, right? Oh, hello. I've got the three by three mine rods. <laughs> I was like, why did everything just break? Um, so this thing currently is set to export nothing, right? So I turned off redstone and I turned off beef wellington, which is fine, not a big deal. Uh, I think I'd like to try out the TNT generator because uh, that sounds like a good time to me. Let's put these things away for the time being. Um, do I want to get rid of the redstone generators and the culinary generators or do I want to leave them here? Uh, and expand it. I think I'd like to leave them here and expand it. So what I think I'll do, hey, I said teleport you. Uh, let's get a travel anchor or two. That shouldn't be too bad to get. Uh, we just need two of you. So we're gonna want two pulsating iron. Check and check. That should be quick and easy to craft. Um, and then we'll want pulsating crystals and we'll go from there. Sound like a plan? Uh, we'll use that as an elevator to get up and down nice and easily. Uh, as soon as you feel like crafting, pulsating dudes. You cooking something else up down there, or what? What's taking so long? Oh, you were making vibrant alloys. Oh, that's right, I asked for, uh, more conduits. You were probably busy making those. Thank you for that half a stack of conduits. Thank you, thank you. Cool, so paste, pulsating iron, one, two. Then we can have two of you, and then we can have travel anchors times two. We're gonna need conduit times 10, which is pretty quick and easy to make, honestly. Especially considering we have unlimited sand and gravel now, right? Nice. So that's all good. So with that in mind, let's go set up travel anchors so that I can have a way in and out of my basement. So let's say, where would I want this travel anchor to sit? Probably here-ish. which means here is where I'll have the other side of my travel anchor. So that boom, boom, in and out, right? Oh, hello. That's what I want. I don't want to jump over to that guy. Cool. I might get rid of that draconic one, we'll see. Um, the travel anchor there acts like an elevator for me. So that means that I can now Just get rid of these. And this was a temporary infinite water source that I had set up. So now we can expand with some ender energy conduits. One, two, three. Some TNT explosive generators that I prepared earlier. One, two, three. And I think I wanna steal, if I could have three more speed upgrades, that would be cool. Right, and then we'll put six in each and we'll see how that goes in terms of power gen. And then what we're gonna want is to expand transfers. See how I prepared like almost everything ahead of time? Pretty proud of myself. Single item, single item, single item. Uh, so that should be cool. We'll get piping here. And then we just have to add TNT. So if we wanted to, we could just add TNT to the existing guys, right? Like that should be fine. So let's put it in here. Um, I thought I had some TNT. You know what, I taught it how to make TNT. I crafted TNT, I didn't take it with me. So close enough. So let's uh, put this in the interface export. We're probably gonna want like, let's keep 10 in here at all times. Does that sound like a good number? Okay, and your job will be to filter on TNT. Whitelist TNT. So we will swap you out, redstone TNT. So let's see how this goes, right? So what we should see is when this thing starts to die in terms of power, and I'm going to help that along here momentarily. Uh, and you guys are gonna each get the six upgrades. 
Now this might be a little bit explodey loud, but it shouldn't be explodey loud. I lied. Explodey hurtful. And loud. <laughs> okay. So that helps. Sorry. Loud. So how much RF attack are we getting here? 1,000... 1,120 per? It's not bad. The only thing is it's really loud. Um, and annoying. So what I might do is make a sub-basement for that purpose. Uh, you are probably not currently the owner of any kind of sword, are you? Take that bad guys. Alright. Sword check. Cool. Uh let's So that was a little bit louder and crazier than I expected it to be. Apologies. Uh let's remedy that. So let's do this instead. Let's Am I still running too? Wow, look at you. Just having a good old time blowing up. So you should stop running pretty soon. Right, so this will be the last set of TNT that we get, right? They work really well. They're just loud and exploding. So that's a thing. Uh, incidentally, I wouldn't mind active with signal. Does that mean you'll stop sending redstone into here? I'd like to see you fill up and see what happens when you fill up. I'm just kind of curious what happens when this thing fully fills up. Which he really should be doing pretty soon. Let's speed it up. We can get some decent RF a tick out of this, by the way. And it actually, the TNT lasts a while. We get a lot of TNT from this. It generates 512,000 RF per TNT. And we get a lot of gunpowder from our mob farm. Where is all this energy going? That's what I want to know. Not going into here. Are you getting a redstone signal? Is that what's up? Never active. You're not allowed to get things. No power for you. I want to see this fill up. Where's all this power going? Is it just filling the conduits down there? I guess. All right, back in a minute when this fills up. All right, guys, time for a little update. Um, between the last segment and this, I decided to rearrange this. And uh, I did record it, but it got messed up, the recording segment. So I just, I'm going to show you guys what I did, is what's going to happen now, right? So I missed, for whatever reason, I, I, I messed up the recording of the actual um, building of this section. But I'll show you now. So call it a dire derp. So, hey, everything's moved. Neat. Uh, so I put a travel anchor here to get me up and down. Nice. Uh, and down here, we set up the following. So underneath this mana glass, which just looks so nice, uh, we just rearranged some things. So here's what I determined, right? I figured that an explosive generator with five speed upgrades in it, right? If we had three explosive generators with five speed upgrades, it's pretty much the same as one explosive generator with 15 speed upgrades. So why have three explosive generators? Doesn't make any sense, right? So we're not going to have three explosive generators with five speed upgrades. We'll have one with 20, right? And that's going to be pretty good. And this thing generates a lot of power. Um, we do have the sound muffler down there. So like if we got a piece of TNT and we threw it in there, we'll see that it's producing 3,360 RF a tick. So that ain't bad. That's actually pretty good. Uh, and overall, I think we get something like 500,000. Wow, that really hurts. Um... It explodes so much because we're speeding it up 20 times, right? So it's, you know, 
plus you know 20 times the power 20 times the explosions um but that's cool so we've set this up um we've got this guy set up here with tnt in it extracting a little bit faster we i, I kind of ran this thing here for fluids into the lava we don't have any way to get redstone and beef wellington in here what i'm going to try and figure out um is a way to do this transfer node thing right now it like fills up its internal buffer and that's bad right we don't want that to happen so we need to find a way i i thought about doing retrieval nodes um but we can't with retrieval nodes specify filtering of one item at a time like a single item like we do here so that doesn't work but anyway the other thing i set up is a redstone receiver and transmitter so we've got a redstone signal turning this off and that's connected to this transmitter over here turning it on um so that basically when we get low on power in this dude um pretty much the same way the redstone signal worked before it'll kick on the generator and then we've got a combination of power here and tnt power and the tnt power is pretty nice because a it's a lot of power and b we have pretty much unlimited gunpowder right like we've got 1100 and something and if we pop real quick over to our blood magic -y area um let's see how much gunpowder do i actually have 17 stacks so i'm actually burning through it at a decent rate but it's okay we're still doing what we're doing over here sweet plus 21 at some point creepers die see i see creepers in there right now right and that becomes plus 22 so we're, we're endlessly getting more and more gunpowder and if that ever becomes too much whatever we'll uh we'll deal with it at that point sound like a good plan all right so now let's get back to some rf tools dimensional stuff because that's where we're at now i want to make a dimension with some custom attributes and guys we are back so what are we going to do i want to jump in here and take a look at all the dimensional stuff i've got so i'd like to create a custom dimensions so the first thing i'm going to need is one of these dimensional dudes uh the empty dimension tab and Here's what I want to make, is I would like to make a dimension called Shard World, okay? Uh, I would like Dimensional Shard Ore, and I have this Material Dimlet for Dimensional Shard Ore. That has to go in first, and you'll notice that it's giving me a warning, because it's in there by itself. It says there are dangling modifiers in this descriptor. Basically what that means is, when we put a Dimensional Shard Ore in, we have to tell it where to put that Dimensional Shard Ore. And I have a modifier in here called Dimlet Tendrils. So we're going to have tendrils of dimensional shard ore running throughout this dimension right the dimensional shard ore goes before the tendrils it's like an adjective to a noun right so like instead of like green wool it's dimensional shard ore tendrils now we've got that realized dimension tab right i'm going to take out the old dimension tab and put in the new one this thing has a creation cost of 73,100 rf per tick which means currently we're using 73,100 rf per tick to create this dimension and we're only 15 percent of the way into it it's very very expensive to create this dimension and then its maintenance cost is going to be 18,000 RF a tick, which is huge, right? So we're only a quarter way through, and we just probably burned through all the, all the, all the stuff that we've got. Uh, this is the wrong room. But we probably just burned through all of the power we have. So you can see my TNT generators on. You can see my oil generators are running, and we're burning power at a rate of 13,000 RF a tick after all that stuff kicks on. We'll probably see my generator here kick on in a moment get some food into me there it goes uh yep so now we're still not able to maintain this so we're probably gonna have to look at a different type of power storage and transfer mechanic relatively soon if we're gonna keep making dimensions that require this much power um let's go up and see what our status is so we're currently sitting at 50 percent. so we're halfway there so let's come back in a minute when this thing's all done deal all right, guys, we're back, and uh, we have a realized dimension tab. This dimension is up and running. Uh, currently, it's being powered. It's requiring 18,000 RF a tick to run. It's crazy. Uh, so let's get over there real fast while we even have the power. <laughs> get what we need and turn it off. Uh, so let's make sure we have a way home. You, charge border, ready to roll. Dire base to shard ward, dial once. This will generate the world, and we're going to cross our fingers that we have a dimensional shard world. Oh, hello. What did I find here? Well, this is a unique uh, situation to find myself in. I uh, don't even know what to expect of this.
Should I be digging up or down? What's my Y level at the moment? 104. I think this might be like uh, one of those dimensions that's like the nether. I either want to get on top of it or underneath it. I'm going to continue digging up and hope that I luck out. Looks like there's creatures up there, so that's a good sign. I also want to be careful about the power usage of this thing. Because... I'm seeing something through the wall. You see that blinking effect? I'm getting out of here. I don't know how far I have to go, but it looks like we're getting... Nice! <gasps> Dimensional Shardor! Look at it! It's here! We found it! Dimensional Shardor! Nice. Alright, let's... Um... Looks like we're getting a bunch of it, which is cool. Nice. Alright, let's go home. Just to be safe. I want to check on the dimensional shard itself. So, we're doing alright on power in there. Um, we want to keep an eye on the power stored in that. RF Tools Dimensions has something for that, doesn't it? Um, dimensional Monitor. This will tell us how much power, or lack thereof. Let's do Comparator. Dimensional monitor we have going on in that dimension. So let's dial that back up once. And I wouldn't mind while I'm here real quick to get my drill upgrade that does three by threes. So now I should teleport back into that cave and I should, whoa boy, there's a lot of monsters in here. If I blink up, looks like there's two caves directly underneath each other. So that's cool. And we can see with the dimensional monitor how much power is in here. And if we see this thing start to dip, we'll know it's time to get out of dodge, right? So real quick, I'm gonna mine a bunch of this dimensional shard ore. And this is going to make my life a lot easier with RF Tools Dimensions. And I will explain why when we get back. By the way, lots of dimensional shard ore going on here. Good times. So the other thing I'd like to set up now that I've got this is an activity monitor. This is going to be really important and the reason I'm doing this right away is because I want to do it right away because we're draining power like crazy over there, right? So let's get ourselves a handful of activity monitor probes. So these activity probes are super useful. All you got to do, um, and I might change where this dimensional receiver is in this world. <laughs> Because clearly it's not in a good place. <laughs> Witches and all kinds of badness. Um, but I'm going to place this activity monitor probe anywhere in this dimension. And what it does, uh, let's put it like right up here, why not? Okay, is notice how we're in this dimension, right? And we're actually losing power now. So like we're having power problems back at our base, which is bad, right? When I leave this dimension, um, it's going to stop draining power out of the dimension. Um, so this thing should no longer be losing power. See how the current power is not dropping? That's because there's an activity probe in there. What the activity probe does is check to see if there are any players currently in the dimension. If no, stop using power. That's huge, right? Because um, we were like destroying our power gen um, otherwise. So let's go into our basement and see what's going on power-wise. Um, you guys are doing okay. You're out of power. Haha, -ha, there's the problem. Okay. Uh, so let's pop in here and get this guy. And we can pop into here and use him as a fuel source right here. This gives us a bunch of this blue bar. Um, and then we can start making this more efficient. So what does uh, quartz get us efficiency-wise? Plus 7 efficiency with a cap of 80. Okay, so let's get that quartz uh, efficientized. I might want like another stack of it. Half a stack for now ought to do. We want to get that up to 80. I'll be back when it's done. So efficiency is at 79.3. We just have a little bit of purifying to do, which I'm going to speed up courtesy of this guy. 83.3, 83.8. Efficiency is going to be good here in a second. Once I get it back up to 85% efficiency, we'll let it create a crystal. Uh, what I did is I set my valve to be apply with redstone only. So now you're at 84.7. Come on, acceleration ones. Let's go. 84.9. Those last few ticks of efficiency take a minute. Purity 85. Go. 
So that should allow you to run, right? Apply 70. Nice. Cool. So you should be going. You're going to create a crystal for me. Cool. You're draining. We're going to speed this up as well. 14%, 15%. Here an enderman interested in what I'm doing. Oh, you need power to run. <laughs> Irony. Turn this off. You're empty. Cool. While that's good, I'm going to go ahead and prep for the next set. So, 30 of these into the cooker. So that you start running. You are doing your best power wise. Yeah. Nice. We're really hurting for power right now. See why I set up the TNT generator? I knew this would be a problem. Luckily, my dimensional builder has its internal buffer refilled. These guys are probably refilling their internal buffers of 4 million each. So that's probably what's going on right now. You could really use a little bit more power. Um, capacitor. I have a million RF sitting in here. Is that helping? Sure is. Eighty-four percent. Nice resonating crystal, which will be a decent amount of RF production. Thirteen thousand RF a tick. Cool. You should just start running. In theory. In theory, it should just start running. I may need to turn on and off the redstone signal. There we go. Now we should be getting a large RF influx. Nice. All right, so power's back up and running. We're cool. So we've got a lot of dimensional shard ore. Why did I want that? I wanted a machine infuser. Um, a machine infuser from RF Tools is a super useful device that allows me to infuse machines uh, and make them more efficient. And you infuse them with dimensional shards. Okay. One of the things I'm going to want to infuse is my dimensional builder. The dimensional, or no, I'm sorry, the dimensional workbench. So here's how it works. When you place a dimlet in here and you want to extract, every, every dimlet is composed of six components. These six items here. Okay, um, and they determine exactly what that dimlet is. So like this material dimlet, ebony wood planks, for example, right? Um, if we look at dimensions, RF Tools dimensions, we've got all those components in here. So we've got memory units, energy modules, control circuits, uh, type circuits, basic memory units. And if you look through the book, you'll see basically what those are. Um, dimlet crafting, okay? It tells you here, there's the base dimlet item, the control circuit, the energy module, the memory module, and the type controller. These three items, the control, energy, and memory module, affect the rarity of the item. So typically, um, the more rare it is, like diamond is really rare and dirt's not rare. That's an example, right? So there's three types of energy and memory modules, uh, and there's uh, six types, something like that. Uh, when you extract dimlets into parts, right? So you basically have these five parts and then the essence item. So for example, um, because this dimlet is a material dimlet, ebony wood planks, five of these items, the first five in the list, um, affect things like the rarity um, and things like that. The last item is the essence type. That is exactly the item itself. So the essence type is ebony wood planks. There's another material dimlet for shard ore, right? And that's kind of similar, but it would be a different rarity level. And the last item would be a shard ore item, right? So when we extract this, we only get 40%. In other words, we'll get two out of the five material types. In order to get all 100% or all five of them, we have to infuse this workbench. And you can even see on the whale two tooltip, infused 0%. And let's get this out of here before I accidentally dig up my whole base. That sound nice? Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to go and infuse this thing. 
So infusion can happen pretty much anywhere. You know what, in fact, I might even do infusion in this building. So let's do that in here, right? Uh, all I need is my crystal binder to say you give this thing power and we've got it, cool. So now we can infuse our dimlet workbench with these things. Nice, and we can see that's happening, right? Um, we could even accelerate this if we want to speed it up for the audience. And Dimlet Workbench, when we place it in the world now, we'll see that it's infused 25%. So one stack of shard ore equals 25%. What a coincidence that I grabbed four. It's almost like I knew what I was doing. Uh, infusing uh, machines like this will do all kinds of things. In this case, it like gives it more efficiency in terms of when it's um, breaking down things. But other components of RF tools use infusion for other reasons, right? And, We'll see them throughout the series. But now we've got an infused 100%. So what this means is when I throw my material dimlet in here and hit extract and it goes doo -doo 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 -doo, it's going to give me five items, right? This was a dimlet base part, which you're always going to get. Material type controller, because that's exactly what it is. Dimlet material type controller. It, it controls the type of material you're going to have, right? And then those three things. Memory unit, which is regular. I think, you know, Basic is uh, rarity 0, 1, regular is rarity 2 and 3, and advanced for higher regular. So it's like a middle tier. Uh, regular energy module, again, there's 0 to 1, 2 and 3, and then higher tier rarities. And then uh, dimlet controller control circuit rarity 2. Cool. So those components can now be used to craft something else. So if I want to get another material type, like dark yellow block, you can see what's required there. And if I double click it, they can go into it. So now all I need is to say I want, you know, dark yellow block, whatever the heck that is. Um, you know, if we want, oh, you know what? That's probably from, um, you know what that is. Uh, that's that's from our cool mod, right? So night slime would be material five, right? Aluminum would be rarity five. So different rarity levels, obviously. And that affects it, right? So if we want a gray hardened clay, it would be the same deal, right? Rarity two, we're gonna get those items. Neat. So now we can customize this stuff, which is awesome. Um, what I'm probably going to want to do is keep these in here um, because I think this thing has like a lot of inventory space and I'm going to want to um, get, let's see. So we have dimlet rarity type controllers five. So like, let's say I wanted nether or if we wanted draconic ore, right? Draconium ore. That's going to require a rarity type four. Cool. So we can literally make draconium ore with this system. Uh, so we're gonna need rarity four. So do we have a rarity four uh, thingy? We have rarities one, two, three, and five, but not four, how funny is that? Um, but that's okay. Uh, material, so if we found a material with rarity four, that would probably be good. Here we go, rarity four, light blue wool is apparently rarity four, neat, okay. So if we, I have, that's why. For some reason, no wireless transmitter, okay. Wool. For some reason, light yellow and light blue wool are rarity four. So if we go in here and we extracted these, oh nice, that's an on all thing. So I can pipe items in here to automatically extract them. That's pretty cool. Um, and then we wanted dracon draconium ore. Sweet, so we've got everything we need for that. How cool is that, huh? So now all we have to do is absorb draconium ore, and we can make a dimension with draconium ore. Nice, right? All right, guys, so I think we're getting pretty close to the wrapping up point, so here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm going to, real quick, I wanna check actually two things. One, is draconium, ender draconium ore any different? It's not. So I can make a dimension of ender draconium ore tendrils, which is probably what I'm gonna wanna do. So next episode, we're going to build that. Um, and again, it's gonna require a stupid amount of power uh, to create and a stupid amount of power to maintain because it's gonna pretty much be the same complexity as the shard ore, right? So it's gonna be a huge amount of RF just to build that dimension. But once we do it, we should have really good access to draconium. And then what I'd like to do is start working on, you ready for this? Dun, dun, dun. You start refining, please. Nice. Uh, I'd like to start working on a thing that's gonna store a lot of power, like a lot of power, and be able to transfer it quickly. At this point, we've hit a limit. The limit is how much RF per tick we can transfer courtesy of our capacitors, right? We can only hold 25 million and we can only transfer 25,000 RF a tick. 25,000 RF a tick was a lot the other day, but today it 
I mean, we need 75,000. We need three times that just to create a dimension. Um, and we're going to start doing more and more things that require huge amounts of power. So it's probably time to start looking at a thing that can hold way more power. And we're also going to want to generate more power. And we're also going to want to transfer that power very quickly. So for now, wrap it up point, and we'll come back next time, and we'll start working on getting more draconium ore, more power storage, and more tra power transfer rate, and maybe even clean up the whole generator system we got downstairs. Because it's a mess down there. I know it's a mess. You know it's a mess. We need to do something about that generation area. All right. Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. For now, take it easy.